Good afternoon everyone, my name is Kenneth Carlson, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the Panasonic G5 camera. For those of you who have been waiting for my review, I apologize for the delay between a series of things that have been going on in my life and the fact that I hadn't really been out to use the camera very much, I would put off doing the review until I felt I was ready. Also being slightly honest, I'd seen some reviews that have been done of other cameras and let myself get a little bit intimidated but I'm just going to go with what I've got and give you my impressions of the camera along with a few technical details. If you're looking for something a little more in depth, I'm going to provide a link to another review I've seen of it that I found very good. It'll be in the comments below the review. All right, so this is the Panasonic Lumix G5 camera. It's a 16 megapixel live MOS sensor compared to the 12 megapixel analog that was in the G3. ISO 160 to 12,800. However, I gotta say, having used the camera some now, it's really only acceptable up to a say approximately 3,200. You can get away with a little more, but you're going to get some graininess in your pictures. <clears throat> Turn it around, and now we have the touch screen on the back. The touch screen is uh, 920 dots, 920k dots, excuse me compared to the 460K that was in the G3. It's a very beautiful display in my opinion. Compared to the old one, you get much better views. I'll put the lens on in a little bit and show you through the live sensor. Also, the viewfinder has been improved as well. It's 1.44 million dot electronic viewfinder. The eye sensor, which is present now, which is an improvement of the G3 on its own, is very good. You can also still switch with the manual button over on the side, or you can assign it to function three. <clears throat> the other thing that's been improved is the video recording is now a full AVCHD 1280 by 1060 p video. <clears throat> also can still do MP4s at 30p and 1080. And that's compared to the old one, which I believe was only the 1080 by 60 um, AVCHD. Uh, the only problem with the MP4 recording so far, in my opinion, is it eats up space on your card like there's no tomorrow. There are also no manual video controls, as far as you, I can tell. What you set it to when you start recording is what you're stuck with. The GH3 that's coming out relatively soon should solve a lot of these problems if you're looking for a camera that's a little more for video production. I say this, of course, as I'm recording this on a uh, Samsung Galaxy player since I sold off my old G3 <clears throat> and I'd been doing video recording with that. Uh, as for the picture qualities, they've been great so far. I'm pretty happy with it. It gets six frames per second continuous shooting compared to the four frames per second that the G3 got. A limitation on that is although it can take six shots per frames per second shooting, it does seem to take a lot longer than I'd like to actually process the photos. So you fill up that buffer pretty fast. Um, I like to do a lot of shooting. Uh, let me just get to the menu here. Sorry. I like to do a lot of bracket shooting, and sometimes I like to go anywhere from three to five. The problem with that can be if I'm trying to shoot a few pictures in a row. I fill up the buffer and then have to sit there waiting for it to process. Hopefully, this is a software limitation and not a physical limitation with the camera so that future updates may actually solve this problem. The touch screen, in my opinion, on the G3 is a lot more responsive. You can still use the manual controls on the camera if you want to. Not to mention the focus touch is a really nice feature. You can use it on the viewfinder, obviously. The nice feature is you can use the uh, viewfinder to look through and leave the touchpad on the side and actually choose your points of focus with the touchpad. It doesn't have to be in a position like this. It can be here. Obviously, the problem there is your face is going to get in the way. <clears throat> Stereo microphone on top for your video recording. Limitation to that is, unfortunately, there is no input for an off-camera mic. For anyone doing video producing, this is probably, unfortunately, a deal breaker in addition to the no manual controls. 
The rubber grip is also new. It's a vast improvement over the G3 as far as I'm concerned, since sometimes it honestly felt like I was going to drop this camera. Whereas with the G5, it's so light even with a lens attached that this grip enables you to virtually use the camera one-handed. The limitation to that being is you really can't get at any of the controls below where the uh, shutter button and such are very easily, especially if you've got the camera up to your eye. Uh, the viewfinder has been pretty good. The function controls have all been good. And as I said, the touchpad is vastly improved. Picture quality, as I said, is, I, I'd have to say, even not allowing for the improved sensor. It just seems like the pictures are much clearer and much less contrasty than they were on the G3. My limitation to this is I like to do a lot of candid shots in malls and such. And unfortunately, in low lighting, the G5 is not going to be your best choice. The Sony 5N that I owned up until recently definitely seemed to take much better low light shots. And my uh, Nikon 5100, although a much bulkier camera and obviously not mirrorless, also seems to do much better in low light. It's not a deal breaker, but it is something to keep in mind. Built-in flash, of course does pretty good and you can adjust the settings to a limited degree on camera. Another thing I should probably mention is if I can get to the menu, if I can get to the right menu, some of the scene modes. Now these of course require you to shoot in intelligent auto. However, some of the scene modes on the G5 are actually incredibly good. Although I usually prefer shooting in RAW and usually prefer shooting the pictures, adjusting myself and hate switching to intelligent auto, I'm going to be taking pictures using some of these scene modes. Miniature effects you've seen before, soft focus is a decent one. Star filter, one point color, I've actually used that for a few pictures now. And I have to honestly say, it works better on the G5 than I think I've seen on any other camera, especially using the touch screen to point out where you want the color to come from. Impressive, eh, retro, it's decent. High key, not actually sure why many people would want to shoot overexposed, but it is there. Low key, opposite end, obviously. Sepia, for those photojournalism looks. Dynamic monochrome, that one's actually been pretty good, especially as they show here for landscape shots, uh, cityscapes, I should say. Impressive art, high dynamic. <clears throat> And also this having HDR is another thing as far as I know that the G3 was capable of doing. It just wasn't very impressive and processing it in camera is also pretty good. There's also your scene modes. Clear night, soft flower, appetizing food. I hate to think of what it would say do to say Brussels sprouts. <clears throat> Cute dessert. I'm not even sure what that means. Freeze animal motion, clear sports shots, monochrome, clear portrait, silky skin, backlight softness, obviously very useful. Clear and blacklight, backlight, relaxing tone, sweet child's face, so you can take pictures of all your friends' ugly kids. Distinct scenery, bright blue sky, Romantic sunset, vivid sunset, glistening water, clear nightscape, and background to cool night sky and warm glowing. <clears throat> now again, I don't necessarily recommend using many of these scene modes more often if you feel like controlling more on your own because I always hate giving up control of the camera to the camera. But they are there and a lot of them are actually pretty decent. I'd recommend at least checking them out and maybe using them for your specialized shots as opposed to just your off-the-cuff ones, or possibly they're even better for some of those. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the camera. The buffer, unfortunately, is a big deal to me. As I said, I'm hoping that Panasonic will fix that in a future update. Um, the kit I got came with the 14-42 to lens. I also have the 45-200 to that I bought recently. I'll be doing a review of that later on. And it will use most of the Micro Four Thirds meant for the other Panasonic cameras, obviously, and even some of the Olympus, since, as I understand it, a lot of the Micro Four Third lenses are interchangeable. 
and it comes with all the options and instructions. I've replaced the neck strap with an Optech USA strap. I'll also be doing a review of that later on. And possibly be doing a review of other products I've got that are in the more affordable price range for photography. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope this was informative. If you have any questions I'll be happy to answer or watch the other review that I will link to. It gives a lot more details that I may have skipped over. Thanks a lot.